Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Indiana Jones. Minute. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where we discuss the film Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, one soul-crushing betrayal at a time. (laughs) I'm Tom Taylor. I don't think it's the betrayal that's soul-crushing here, but I'm I'm Pete (laughs) Mummer. I'm Gerald Christopher, this way, Porter. And joining us today is our old pal, illustrator, cartoonist, uh, bon vivant, uh, interdimensional visitor, Joe Dater. <laughs> Hello, I've just come from the other dimension, and boy, are my arms tired. Yeah. How do you uh, do? <laughs> I, love the, I love your theme song that I just got to hear, because we just started the show, of course. And uh, it's, it's always a pleasure. You still, you still play the theme song, right? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. That's yeah. Well, what, what, what else? Asking? What are we going to do without it? Right. And it's the <laughs> theme song the that I. Yeah. And it's the theme song that I now know comes from uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. That's right. right. Yeah. Real, hey, wait, real, real quick, before we start, what kind of last name is Dater? Oh, it's it, like it was originally a, it was a short name. Of, it was, it was from, uh, from the old country. Like Dateronsky? No, it was uh, the. the, uh, the uh, the uh, it was it was Dater Smith. It was Dater Smith, and <laughs> really, I a, and I had a relative who wanted to shorten it to sound less ethnic, so they they took <laughs> off Smith. <laughs> and 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 I and I always thought that was the stupidest decision ever. Wow. Um, no, it's something like that. It's the, the the real story is like that, only much less funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was from an old it was from a, a somebody from the old country and it was a longer name and it was Italian actually. Oh. Um, it was a it was an Italian name that was long. My well, my real ancestors were coincidentally also Italian, but this name comes from my uh, family that raised me, who are not genetically related to me, but they were also Italian anyway because it was the Bronx. A lot of people were Italian. A lot of people. Sure. Yeah, and, sure. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. all seen the movies. You know, in, I, in the nineteen sixties, <laughs> many, many people were Italian. Uh, I don't know if they all are still, but a lot of people in the nineteen sixties, <laughs> in, yeah, in New York. Uh, but we, coincidentally, what it got the name got shortened to D A T O R, which coincidentally, and unbeknownst to any of my relatives who are not my relatives, um, it's a very common surname in the Philippines. And, Dater. Uh, yeah. Oh. And so I often get people emailing me saying, hi, my name is also Joe Dater and are we related? And they're <laughs> emailing me from, from the Philippines. And, wow. uh, and I say, well, no, we're not related, but I'm also not related to my own family either. So don't, w- we might as well be related. It's true. <laughs> sure. It's fine. There. Yeah. yeah. You are now well, my I, You know, I was thinking about this because, you know, my mother's maiden name and we're, we're Callahan's. And then I, you know, you look and you're like, oh, it's uh, O'Callahan. You know, the, oh. I think that's when you go back to the old sod, it's O'Callahan. Mm-hmm. And and I, <laughs> I'm just imagining, you know, somebody at some point dropped the O and from O'Callahan to Callahan. I was like, oh, boy, they're never going to know <laughs> now. The wool over our eyes now. <laughs> oh, oh, blending oh. right in. <laughs> it's OK. We live next to the Callahan's. They're not OK. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. So, <laughs> o- O'Callahan sounds like a song. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Just it was Callahan. You sound like he'd be time. a like a rugged cop in the seventies. Yeah, maybe like a like a filthy. <laughs> was it, wasn't there wasn't there a Callahan? Was there was a Banat? There was Banachek. There was Callahan. Um, was Dirty Harry? Yeah, Dirty oh, right, Harry. Dirty Callahan. Harry was Callahan. That yeah. was it. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. thinking of. Right. I knew there was a there was a Callahan who was a had a gun and shot people. But I thought it might have been one of the many '70s detectives, like you know. Oh sh- uh, yeah, there should have been. Well, oh, sp- speaking of '70s entertainment, I, Joe is one of the few people on earth that loves the great TV series Quark as much as Tom and I do. 
That's right. The last time I saw, like, like <laughs> Pete, I've seen for a while, but Joe, the last time I saw you, it was in the, I don't know, the other universe dimension, I guess, where, uh, yeah, we briefly Quark crossed last over, we briefly and... crossed over into an alternate, uh, reality in which, in which, uh, you are, uh, you are the Tom. Well, you're Tom in this reality too, I guess. That's true. But you're a different Tom. You're kind of like Spider Man. It's just same guy, different, <laughs> right. different reality. And I was, and I'm the Joe who was not the Joe who's in this reality who talks about Star Trek. I was now the Joe who talks about Quark. Right. Um, <laughs> this is this is so much fun, isn't it? It is and, fun. Uh, I mean, yeah. if anybody wants and, to know what we're talking about, this is an episode of uh, ABCD TOS where it's the wires got crossed and I got sucked into another dimension where Quark was as yeah. big as Star Trek and they hadn't even heard of Star Trek. Yeah. And in that universe, I, I gleaned while I was there, they stopped at three. There were three Indiana Jones movies. But over here, Joe, I want you to be sitting down for this. There are four. Mm. They made a fourth one in 2008, <laughs> and it's called Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and that's why God. you're here. We're going to talk about minute 101 of that movie. Oh, God. Yeah. There were 100 minutes of it? Yeah. No, so 101 far. minutes? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. far. There's going to be a few Yeah, more. I. you sent me the one minute. And I watched the one minute. You were confused, and, weren't you? All right. Confession. I didn't watch the whole minute. It dragged <laughs> <Yeah>. a little. <laughs> it dragged it. I got up to make a sandwich about halfway through and I never I never watched the rest of it. That's hard. Um, I, just yeah. couldn't get through, I just couldn't get through all 60, all 60 of the seconds. <laughs> of go, okay, I'll count to 60 and then I'll like keep me entertained until the minute's over. But even that doesn't, doesn't do it. You just, yeah. just, just got to go do Wait, something else. Hold on. Hold on. I have to, before we get started. I I was just thinking about your theme song, and I was just thinking about the connection to how you have a great theme song that explains the premise of your show. And I was thinking that it's funny that that comes from Mystery Science Theater 3000 guy, who their show has a, another its own great theme song that explains the premise of their show. That is true. Maybe, maybe one of the best ever. A great throwback to the yeah. days when the theme song of a show would explain what the show was about, you know. And the butler is a ghost and you won't even know. <laughs> you know, there's stuff like that. If I, yeah, you find the good, you find the bad. Yeah. You know, what and, then them both, have, and then you, you have, you have yeah. trouble and yeah. you have to move in with Mrs. Garrett and then you have the facts yeah. of life. <laughs> The yeah. world don't move to the beat of just one drum. <laughs> yeah. Did you um, think that they said Drummond in that song? No, the I never. The beat no, of just I one never, Drummond because his name. No, was I never Drummond. did. I never did. Oh, me neither. Um, no, but uh, so I just <laughs> I have to tell one of my favorite stories of sad nerddom. Okay, uh, it came to that the right place. Stuck in my mind forever, and I've never gotten this image out of my head, uh, which is back in 1996. They put out a Mystery Science Theater 3000 movie. Right. And uh, you could go see it in a theater. Mm -hmm. And I did. And the uh, they made certain changes for the movie to make it more cinematic and theatrical, which is that it has a score. And right. it doesn't begin with the opening that the, that the TV show begins with. And there's mm -hmm. sort of a – there's sort of a – groovy kind of a space age bachelor pad score going on in the background yeah uh which brings you into the film sort of uh, slowly it's more cinematic more cinematic so um the movie was over and the lights come up and there's this one guy and he's he's oh man he's 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 right out of uh, right out of comic-con you know he's wearing a flannel shirt <laughs> and he's got you know his t-shirt on and he's got you know some scruffy facial hair and he was so he was just so described jerry yeah he was so <laughs> the credits are rolling and the lights are coming up and he was so crestfallen at, <laughs> at the fact that this was not exactly like the tv show. did not include what i guess was his favorite thing about the tv show and he just you know you know how you you're in a you're in a movie theater and sometimes you will react verbally you'll yeah. you'll cheer or boo or clap even though it's a movie and the performers can't hear you right and the lights are starting to come up, and this guy is sitting in his seat, and he just goes, theme song. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like, it was just a pathetic cry to no one in particular that he, he just, 
there's a theme song theme song wow. like he maybe thought this was going to start a chant throughout the theater like pe- like angry people demanding their money back you know like theme song theme song theme song it makes you and think the, the makers of the movie know, must have known that at least one person in every theater was going to have that exact reaction. They, they, yeah. they know their audience enough. I guess. I don't know. Maybe. I guess. They may not have known their audience Just... that well in early 90s. They were like mid 90s, though. Uh, maybe. Because it was all still TV hmm. audience at that point, right? I well, guess. No, I towards the, well, I when, when they, by the time they made the movie, it was, you know, close to the end, actually. They but they, the they weren't doing like live shows and stuff at that point, were they? Like, I wonder how much they were interacting. Oh, right. With. Yeah, that's a good point. No, I don't think they were. I think they were just there and up in uh, mini Minneapolis doing their uh, TV series. And Maybe they it. thought nobody cared yeah. about the theme song at all. They're like, now's our chance to not do the theme song. We're making a movie. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Give the people what they want. If we ever want. make a movie of this podcast, we'll keep the theme song. Yeah, and we'll and we'll also oh. keep the Mystery Science Theater three thousand theme song. We'll put that. Yeah, in you can use it because it wasn't in that movie, so it's freed up. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, they took their finger off I the checker. Never, it is now ours. I never forgot that guy, and I still to this day, twenty five years later, wonder <laughs> what did he, th- what did he think was going to happen? <laughs> like, they were going to somebody was going to call the you know uh, the filmmakers and say, oh no, there's a problem. <laughs> We gotta get that theme song on there. <laughs> okay, done. Someone's gonna uh, usher's gonna come. Sir, sit in your seat. Just wait a moment. <laughs> We're gonna get the theme song on here. May I please speak you'll with get the president your, of Hollywood? You'll, you'll get a voucher. You'll be able, you'll be able to stay for the second showing. We will put the theme song on. I'm not sure I want to. You know, people all over the country are sitting in their seats and pathetically crying out theme song. You're not and alone, word sir. has gotten word has gotten to the studio. They are going to fix it. <laughs> for you, sir. And now, of course, that guy now is an army of people who who, mm-hmm. who now control Twitter mm-hmm. and make terrible movie decisions happen. Snyder yeah. cut. Yeah, Snyder right. Cut. Snyder cut. Exactly. Yeah. That's the guy. That yeah. was. We should that have <laughs> nipped it in the bud right then and there. Nineteen ninety six. We should. We should have killed him. Is that what you mean? Yeah, we should kill that guy. Go back in time and kill the poor guy. I get uh, maybe. Okay. I don't know. No, not like, you, you know. I don't, him or something. I don't no. advocate. I don't advocate violence, but I think we, somebody should have said, "Okay, let's cancel this whole internet. It's gotten. It's going to be bad. <laughs> it's going to be bad. Let's stop it right it's now." More trouble than the, it's worth. You know, it's, it's interesting how you know twenty. I guess going on thirty years now, people are like, "Oh, the the internet is going to be great because it's going to give everyone a voice." <laughs> oh, and, and that guy too. Wait a minute. Nothing oh, could be worse. <laughs> My God, I just we need more oh, voices. The, Every single movie comes out, the reaction to it on, on the internet is just, it's horrifying. <laughs> and it was a, such a terrible idea to give everyone a voice. Yeah. Um, anyway, here we are with, uh, let's get on with our podcast, shan't we? Our what? <laughs> oh, yes. Our podcast. <laughs> our podcast on the internet about Indiana where, Jones and yes, the Kingdom yes. of the Thing. And we, yes. as, as uh, people who are not uh, corporately sponsored, have a voice. That's right. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. God, it's so sad. We have a voice when we're using it to talk about Minute 101 of uh, Crystal Skull. <laughs> but such is our lot in life. This is Minute 101, and it begins with everyone standing in the water and Mutt suggesting a way to go. And it ends with Spalco finding one of the beacons left by Mac. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, you know, the first four or five seconds, right? <clears throat> Mutt says, this way? you know as it's a as a question mm-hmm. right and indy mm-hmm. kind of looks at him as if to go over you know he 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 his eyes grab mutt behind the ears and kind of <laughs> ruffle his ears a little bit like you would a dog <laughs> like oh i had a boy is right. that is that what's going on here i'm not sure I yeah think what, is, what is that the look? smile it's, yeah I'm, what is the smile what is the look yeah. Why is he doing this? Is it I'm proud of you boy stuff? Yeah. Because it's not it's just like, the look, it's also like you get a touch of the Raiders theme there. Yeah. And, so, it's, and, it's and he like, chucks the skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh my, because it's not like Mutt said, oh, I know which way to go. Let's go this way. He's like, this way? And it's like, it looks like it's the only place <laughs> yeah. you could possibly go. Yeah. But somehow that equals uh, that he's done something that he didn't. It, it reminds me of. of the whiskey. In yeah. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Maybe yeah. that's what he's thinking of. He's like, that yeah. reminds me of the time I said whiskey. He is my son. <laughs> my boy. It reminds me of when I when I pointed in a direction and my father was so proud of me. 
I wasn't sure. <laughs> well, but I just well, okay. he looked on me, and 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 you could hear the strains of his theme song play in the back. Oh, that's nice. Well, so yeah. th- this what's interesting. If th- this is a warm, heartfelt moment, I think they're supposed to be introducing, or or, or at least the seesaw is now really fully over. On, on the side of Mutt is going to be carrying the, you know, archaeology adventure torch. Mm-hmm. And that, that's what's happening here. We're towards the end of the movie, and he's like, oh, my boy is just like me, all that crap. <laughs> and they, he's, well, they, they have torches, so he could have just handed them. He could have had a <laughs> close, up, yeah. close up on the hand handing yeah. over, and you hear the dun-dun-dun-dun, and that there would have made it that only marginally it. more stupid than, but, 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 yeah. than it well, really this, is. This is what <laughs> is so – it's 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 like walking – through a door and you step on a nail <laughs> the first you know when it right right that happens to me all the time i'm walking in God. between rooms and i <laughs> step on a nail why are there yeah, nails like, all over the floor like, i don't know they're just you dark it's like for the carpet. yeah <laughs> no. my but yeah it's like you just step on a nail and you go, ah, this, a is, <laughs> this is stupid you know it's is that mutt like in real life the torch has just the torch baton archaeology all that has just fallen right to the floor it's like not only was Mutt not, you know, the scion of Indiana Jones, it's like he he's the anti I, I just it's it's it, it feels like if adventure has a name, it's not Mutt. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's weird because it can't it, possibly it, be Mutt. Yeah, it seems that, like that's, it's about to start you know, that it's it's Mutt, but then you know, Indy's back as soon as the camera cuts, Indy's leading the pack again with the torch. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's, it's just it's, that like Maybe it's not so much torch passing. It's just like I'm trying to think. Of, like, when's the last time he addressed the idea of Mutt being his kid? And maybe this is the first time he's like, "Oh, that'd be all right if he's my kid," because he sometimes questions which way to go when we're standing in water, or something, <laughs> like <laughs> just like I would do. He's my hmm. boy. But you know, it's just hard. It's what happens in the movie and watching this. Now we don't know this when you originally saw it in the theater, but <laughs> and then the reality. It's like the two. They're just these in 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 inverse like re- the reciprocals or something. You're like, you know, oh, he's gonna be the next Indiana, and you're like, no, that didn't happen at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess that it's funny watching now, <laughs> ten years later, fifteen years later, whatever it is. I don't know if funny is the word I would use. No, it's, it's a, not well, funny. It's, a, it's, it's like stepping on a nail. Horrific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's both funny I mean, and it, was, it hurts. It was way worse watching it then because you thought they were That's really true. gonna go with that you know at least now you can look back and say oh we dodged a bullet and a half yeah mm-hmm. good point. But then it, it's, yeah. now it's just like another one of those moments in this movie where you're like what exactly are they going for uh, all yeah, right i don't it was know there's a wry smile there but i don't, I don't yeah. know what i'm supposed to do with it okay first of all we all we all know if adventure has a name it's richard l adventure <laughs> right that is that is its full <laughs> Call name me richard yeah right exactly <laughs> um mr adventure so, lives yeah. in florida my name is yeah yeah I was I, I I was never down on Mutt. I don't think anyone was. Was there one person excited about Mutt? One. Maybe I don't Mutt. Even know if Mutt himself? was. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Clear, I don't know. Shia LaBeouf wasn't even excited about <laughs> Mutt taking well, over. Okay. For... You know, Joe, we have had our Mutt watch and our Marion watch to see <laughs> okay. how they throughout the movie, and we uh, we do not think it's fair to uh, you know lay blame at Mutt's feet for the you know ill feelings and the sour taste the dis dyspepsia that this movie gave to so many people yeah um we, th- we think mutt gets blamed too uh, readily too hastily what do you are you what do you think oh there's plenty wrong with it yeah there's plenty plenty wrong with the movie without mutt yeah. i mean there's you know, there's there's the fact that it's simply blindingly moronic, and I hate to go negative, <laughs> but blindingly moronic. <laughs> Just like I was dumbfounded when I came out of the theater, and uh, the first time. But uh, you know, there's 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 things in it that I like, though. There's there's still sure. some some good things that 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 I like. I have I have not I have not seen it in in it, the whole thing all the way through in a long time. So you know, there's not a whole lot that I re- that I remember from it. Um, what did you like? Uh, I Name liked, it. I liked um, some of the funness of of it. I liked that uh, 
he didn't take it too seriously. You know, some of the things mm-hmm. people people mm-hmm. criticize were the refrigerator. I like the refrigerator. The refrigerator's oh, fun. Okay. I like the you know I like the uh, the, uh, the the concept of of having it be in the 1950s and have it to have uh, you know the Ruskies and the and the and the the space invaders. All that's mm-hmm. good. Doesn't turn out so well, but great ideas to begin with. You know. Uh, I like the little little motorcycle chase through Connecticut. That was a little, that was a little fun. I like you know, he does these chase things, but you never get one through like a little urban environment like that. And that was hmm. pretty cool. That's you know? true. Um, you know, and some of the stuff that uh, it, at least it's fun to watch. I I uh, I I like the big ants. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, wait a minute. You're love so, me so some big ants. You just <laughs> indulge this frivolity. So, yeah, I mean, at least okay. at refrigerator least... and big ants. I mean, yeah. that's the end of the <laughs> frivolity rainbow. You just ran, you know, all the way past the t- the tape at the end of the <laughs> race there, and went right there. The big ants and the refrigerator. Big ants like being, being, being okay, my, all right. Being my favorite. I wish there were more more scenes with the big ants. I wonder about those big ants because there there's a lot of them, and they're big and they're deadly. And you have to wonder why, why does how can any life form on Earth exist if, if those ants were real? They would <laughs> they would completely yeah. take over everything yeah. on Earth. They're yeah. just giant and ravenous and and but then they seem to be they they eat one Russian guy and they're done. They're they're fun. they all go back in their hole. And they're like, oh yeah. yeah, we're we ate one we ate a big Russian guy. He was pretty big, so we're full. <laughs> were they, they full they or were they just scared away by the skull? That'd be too I bad know, if they were like, oh, finally already... we have people to eat. Oh, no, we can't. The skull, skull. Was the, the skull was already a thing before they ate the Russian guy. So they, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. I think that was the skull. I think it was just they were like, okay, we've done what we had to do. He was big. He was a big yeah. guy. So we know they're big damn ants. They're deadly. There's trillions of them, but they tend to uh, keep to themselves most of the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. That if they, you know, if they had some sort of manifest destiny, that, that we'd all be doomed. <laughs> so there's well, you no mentioned those that are real ants, but you mentioned that there are. Um, you're making me think of like times earlier in this movie where there was like an image early on, like when uh, or, or in fake Mexico, and Indian mutt are strolling along talking about the old days or something, and I said like, oh, you know, if I saw this image without knowing anything about the movie i'd be excited about the movie i'd be like oh it looks like an indiana jones movie that i haven't seen that's cool he's like talking to a greaser kid okay cool this is like a new weird 50s thing okay and right here we get this image like this very indiana jones image of indy holding a torch like going through a cobwebbed stony dark dank place and that kind of looks like an indiana jones movie but then there's like five people with him and there's like a kid and like an older Marion and like some Cockney dude and an old guy. And I'm like, that doesn't look like Indiana Jones to me. None of this it's looks also, like Indiana Jones to me. Yeah, it's also like a rerun of like eight minutes ago. Yeah, it it's is. The exact, yeah. It's the exact scene of when they walk into the cave behind the waterfall. Right. Yeah. It's a, it, you know, it's very uh, Venice Catacombs meets Chachapoyan Temple. Yeah. It wants to I, be. Yeah, yeah I think one, be, one yeah. of our guests said like it, lo- it looked like... Uh, they took all of the Indiana Jones sets and threw them together in one gumbo. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just nailed them yeah, together that's, somewhere. That I'm not crazy about. What I, I, well, I'll tell you what I don't like. Well, I, I mean, I, you know, I like the ant. Wait, hold on. Can I tell you an ant joke? Please. Yeah. Please. yeah. What do you get when the Pink Panther steps on an ant? Dead ant. Oh. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. No, that's not the joke. Oh, sorry. Oh. oh, start from scratch. What do you get when the Pink Panther steps on an ant? What? The ant's family going, why, God, why? <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> My favorite ant joke. Well, I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like Ray <laughs> Winstone in this movie. Mm. Yeah. I like Ray Winstone. I like him just fine. I like him just fine. Don't like Ray Winstone in this movie because he's, he's the... He's this like thing that I don't like in in sequels where they suddenly introduce a new character who you're supposed to have who they're supposed to have had a history with, mm-hmm. and and you're told, oh yeah, oh, this uh, the main character has a long history with this guy, but you've never seen him before, yeah. and and he, there's no chemistry, and the, yeah, and there's no chemistry. He's the, he's the Frank Pantangeli of <laughs> Indiana Jones. Wait a minute, he's come yeah, on, Frank Frankie no. Five Angels. 
Unfortunately, always kind of irks me in Godfather 2 because we never saw him before. He's suddenly thrown at this thing and we're told, oh, he has a long history with uh, Don Vito. He really? was busy. Okay, well, we never saw him before. We never <laughs> it's saw like Chekhov him. knowing who Khan is, even though he wasn't on the show when Khan was on the show. Yes, but it irks me. It just right. irks me. So, and, I th- so yeah. do you think if, if you had Mac drinking out of a water hose the first time you see him, then that would be more <laughs> endearing and you'd be into him a little more? The old man drank, had too much wine. Um <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe. I mean, I'm, he's he's fine, but I, you know, knowing what I know that that character was supposed to have been Clemenza in, originally, but I understand. Uh, Richard Castellano refused to to come back for the second film. Yeah. Um because he was just he, you know, he thought he was a bigger star than he was. Um you know, and uh, and of course he was proven right cuz nowadays everybody's talking I know. about the great Richard Castellano. I got a poster. Um, I'm looking at him right now. Just him yeah. in, a, in a speedo. Yeah, but I yeah, so I don't like Mac, yeah, and I Mac see that tough. they show up in the in the in the beginning of this minute. The gang's all there. There's Marion Ravenwood, and there's Indiana Jones, and there's this other guy, <laughs> right? And who the hell is he? And here, I mean, here we get like I guess the culmination of the labyrinthine twisty plot of Mac this whole time like he's a friend and then he's not a friend and then he's a double agent and then he's CIA and whatever and oh no look now he's dropping little clues to the Russians he's been working for the Russians apparently so what do we what do we do oh no so he drops a beeping red thing yeah which we know is a tracking device because we have seen other movies right I thought that at first but well i i thought it was a tracking device now i think it's just like a it flashes so someone sees it if they're walking well that was my question because all <laughs> it does is red light all yeah. it does is beep and blink i'm not well, sure how that helps somebody find somebody because he leaves a trail of them yeah that's why yeah. i'm thinking because he wouldn't need to you drop them a- if it were actually a tracking device because <laughs> he has like 30 right. of them in his pants you could leave a what, you could leave sh- a trail of legos you could leave a trail <laughs> yeah. of anything it didn't <laughs> it leave a trail of arrows on the wall. flashes red in a dark room with water like indy everyone's yeah. going to see that flashing red on the wall and you can hear it's audible isn't it and spalco doesn't seem to have like a you know tracker and she doesn't have like a device no. that is leading no her she's just things. looking for the flashing red light well, so, oh, suddenly okay, i so. love these things this is hysterical <laughs> like this is like, oh, I, I ran out could, of breadcrumbs so now i gotta use could, these like at, 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 at least lights rustic, I had in my yeah pocket. you could if, leave if droppings you're <laughs> ca- if you're carrying a tracking device so that you can be tracked why would you drop it that's why i'm saying it can't i don't think it's a tracking yeah. device i think it's just like a <laughs> A dumb I, flashing light that everyone's going to see. Do they, do they drop sell it. this on Soldier of Fortune as breadcrumbs? I, yeah, like, is that I what they, they did set, in like, 1958? It, yeah, like if you like on the back of, uh, you know, whatever it was, leave it to Beaver of Fortune. <laughs> 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 right. Like what? What? What did they sell these things as? How? It, because I, yeah, is he? Is he? Is he? <laughs> Oh my god! Falco finds one, and he leaves one here. Like, how many does he have? Are his p- yeah. pockets bulging with these or big, is it fat like a red mic? lights? Is he? And how close is he leaving them? Is he leaving yeah. them three feet apart? Oh Five god. feet apart? So <laughs> does he <laughs> actually <laughs> drop it? I. You don't see him actually drop it, do you? I. Yeah, you you see him, that's a really yeah, good you do. question because. No, okay. you do see him do it. Drop like, it. actually, I see him reach in his pocket and look around squirrely like. Right. I think that's enough to tell you that he's dropping it, I guess. No, no, he I literally see. drops it on on camera. Okay. You see it come from his hand to the ground. Mm. You do. OK. Yeah. Gosh. All right. And then and then you see um, uh, Kate. Kate. Uh, what's her face? Picks picks one up outside when. Yeah. Um, amongst the dead. Yeah. Uh, dead south americans yeah we thought the uga was were, were like useless and just kind of kind of there for no good reason before and now i guess they really aren't there for any reason <laughs> there's well, a gun so down wonder, by the russians i started wondering i started wondering if it's a good gig to play a dead body in the jungle because <laughs> i saw that like the like the main guy you see laying there and i thought that's probably a pretty sweet sweet gig yeah yeah you just lay there You're only one of them has any blood on them. that's weird yeah, yeah. But see, like, I was thinking if you had like an Ennio Morricone, this could have been a really incredible, haunting, sublime scene. Like there's oh. a scene almost exactly like this in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And it's like sticks with you forever. Oh, yeah. And this is just like a, I didn't even, I've, 
I don't even remember this scene. Like it is, no. it's just kind of like a throwaway. The 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 Uga don't stick with you forever. No, they don't. No. Not 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 in this movie. No, <laughs> they should have stayed in their hidey holes. Well, it's like it's a pretty years. viscerally like violent. Like this is yeah. I mean, they just killed an entire city of people, and it's like next. Yeah, yeah. The it, 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 you you hear the guns in the back. It it is. There's a real darkness to it. You hear the guns, like you know, rattling yeah. in the background, and, and it's a very it's un-Indiana body. Jones minute. I it, guess it they really are is. bad guys. Like not even yeah, the Nazis did that did. stuff, did they? They would like no, they not mean in to these Sala, movies. and that was about it. They like threw yeah. a candle you know, that didn't belong to them. Yeah. Out and out. Well, so do you think? But, you know. no. Is this the first time that the Uga have ever experienced this sort of uh, wholesale slaughter? On that, like. Do they run into people? Like, was it was the last person that they ran into the conquistadors? Were those the last? Well, I'm guessing they oh haven't boy. experienced this wholesale slaughter before because then they wouldn't be here now. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, they had, you know, <laughs> they only left two. <laughs> a year, the wrath of God was came by probably and uh, yeah, killed yeah, a yeah. bunch. You know, yeah. By the way, I have and to point Geraldo out. Then came through. Um, at some point in the movie, not in this minute, but at other points. Uh, Kate Blanchett tosses a monkey. She does. That oh, is true. Yeah. She tosses a monkey. That is not well, a euphemism. She actually throws a monkey. Yeah. 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 No, she grabs an actual physical monkey <laughs> and and tosses and tosses it aside the way you'd throw, you know, a, a, a an orange peel after you finish with it. Yeah. And uh, and it's just and it was just like Klaus Kinski. <laughs> tossing yeah. a monkey and uh, a gear the wrath of god and i don't know if it was a it was a direct filmic reference i don't know but maybe you feel like maybe spielberg is going for that but then it's like you weren't really uh, trying that hard to go for that were you well i find the the whole south america setting in this film a bit disappointing it do just you doesn't it just doesn't look right it just doesn't look pete loves it Pete thinks this I don't is know. fantastic. I, I guess. <laughs> really? Is that sarcastic? Or? It, is it is very sarcastic. sarcastic. Yes. I can't, it I can't carry that. It just doesn't through. look right. I don't know what it yeah. is, but the, well, the settings in all the other Indiana Jones films look like where they're supposed to be, and this doesn't. Yeah. This, yeah. Amazon, this Amazon doesn't, yeah, it just doesn't look right to me. Maybe it's because so much more of it is, is, is digital instead of location, or mm. I don't know what it is, but when they, and then when they're, you know they're in the they're in the jungle and they're in the, the the stone temples and everything. It just looks studio bound and very yeah yeah. It just just doesn't look right. Yeah, I agree. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she tosses a monkey. And <laughs> sure, that's important. And that's, that's how you know she's yeah. bad. It's like the and I don't of saving and, the and I don't expect Spielberg to be Werner Herzog. I don't expect him to. You know, to go into the jungle and live there with no, you know, with like sl- like sleep on a rock for two months to film a scene. You know, I don't expect that they're going to do that. No, um, I guess and not. just have and hire and hire natives who don't speak English to be in the movie. I don't, I don't expect any of that. But still, it should look a little bit better. I mean, come on. It's weird though. Like you, you think about like Aguirre, Wrath of God, or Fitzcarraldo, and those movies are so incredible and evocative of a place at a time but this is the one that's going to be remembered <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right this one's from the i mean i 2000s. guess yeah yeah <laughs> mm. and maybe you know and it's a, an adventure movie maybe it doesn't matter i don't know but i just yeah. you know, i just remember i just remember seeing the film and just and just feeling like um i don't feel like this movie is showing me an exotic location like the other movies did Right, that's I feel the like thing. It's showing like the same guy a, a, has done this much better yeah. with yeah, yeah. And yeah. Characters. yeah. Because the thing that they, these movies had in common with James Bond is they doubled as a kind of a travel log. You know, you'd, yeah, you'd get to see an exotic location. Mm-hmm. There's a bit of a. Uh, I, I have to think this is a uh, an in joke, sort of meta commentary. Uh, as we talked about the torch that Indy's holding, it is shaped exactly like a huge fat Cheech and Chong joint <laughs> and it's being held by harrison ford who you know we're becoming I aware that we, he enjoys i the, think we know perfectly well it yeah. is a huge fat joint it is it, yeah it, that was not a joke that was just that's, he, that's, yeah. a, that's a prop it's, it's, <laughs> it's not even a prop it's it's not even, yeah, not he just had that on his person yeah, yeah. It's not he even just part of the put scene. it down it's like <laughs> harrison, harrison we're gonna we we're gonna film it. any minute now you gotta put it down i'm not i'm not putting it down i'm not putting it down no i'm not i'm not doing it also i think you have a problem I think we need to talk after this. <laughs> Everything in moderation. Nope. Not going to do it. Yeah, I just, 
I think that's probably exactly what that is. Yeah. It works for me. <laughs> yeah. And they just came up with, have, let's give them all torches. Make Just make it look like, like it belongs there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'll tell you what, another thing I, I like about this movie is um, uh, he did a really good job of casting scary Russians. I okay. Think they yeah. Had some really yeah. good, like, of these, like, angry 1950s, you know, Soviet faces in yeah. the bad guys. You know, yeah. there's a, there's a yeah. bunch of those in the movie where I'm like, oh, yeah, he's casting um, out of a comic book, basically. He's casting yeah. these, like, <laughs> these, these yeah. character actors who really look like, uh, like a caricature of the thing they're supposed to be, which is mm-hmm. which he's really good at, you know, in certain mm-hmm. cases, you know. Yeah. Um, How do you feel about Spalko? Speaking of the Russians, we get into we're, we're picking your brain Kate about Blanchett the last days of this movie. Is is a wonderful actor. I just watched her in uh, in uh, Nightmare Alley, um, mm. and she's oh, yeah. she's always good at playing a scary person. Mm-hmm. Um, she's great. Um, and she's having a good time here, chewing up the scenery, and and she's she's fine to watch. Little, little problem I have with her accent, it's it sounds like she's from the Russian section of Tasmania at times. <laughs> you know, it sounds like she's yeah. she's kind of doing the Russian accent, and then and then suddenly it's Hobart. It's like just <laughs> Hobart. Yeah, yeah she. It's, <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what her accent is that she's doing in this. It's mm-hmm. it's right. What is the midpoint between Russia and Australia exactly? I don't know what, but she spends a lot of time there. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, that's. But other okay. than that, I think I mean she's fine. I mean it's kind of and kind of cool uh, uh, making it like these sort of like cartoon scary nineteen uh, fifties Russians, you know? Yeah, kind of because. You know, the Nazis and all that, you know, but um, all this stuff is good on paper. It's all good on paper. It really is. Uh, yes, yeah, it, it really always, is. Yeah. yeah. I want to point out they have the crystal skull with them. Yes. John Hurt is carrying the crystal skull. And we must remember that the crystal skull is highly and occasionally magnetic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. And- <laughs> Do you just have to like have it like tilted the right way or something? I don't or know. the right way? I, have, or? I just don't know. I yeah. have no idea why the little transmitters aren't following it around, you know? Right. Well, they're not made out of gold, <laughs> so they're not magnetic. Think things from like, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of yards away were flying towards it. Yeah. In <laughs> we another didn't mention scene. that last minute. Like, Mutt was freaking out that, that uh, Oxley dropped the skull in the water. They should just wait for all the armor that was on all those corpses to just, you know, gravitate towards uh, one part. And that's where you know the, where the skull is. Yeah. That's how you find yeah. it. Oh, well. I like the armor clad corpse. I think I would watch a whole movie about him. Sure. Yeah. Like, like There's a few of them in this movie. Conquistador skeleton guy or whatever he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the premise of that would be. I guess. Uh, some sort of like uh, conquistador, but he's he's dead. But he's mm-hmm. uh, he's cursed to be alive. But he's a skeleton. And would he be like Skeletor, or would he be a good guy? No, he... no, he'd be he'd be a well. He wouldn't necessarily be a good guy or necessarily a bad guy. He'd be just a very very human character, full of mm-hmm. nuance. Would he actually so, just be a corpse there, dead during the whole movie? But he's got a very active inner life, and that's what you're seeing. Well, Thinking yeah, I mean, he'd, times or he'd have to have an active inner life because he's very limited physically. He is. He can't, dead. we can't give him a love interest or anything like that. No, that'd but, be weird. So, yeah, so we, but I, I imagine him uh, experiencing the human drama that we all experience of sure. day-to-day life, which affects us, which which uh, can be joyful. It can be, it can be sad and, uh, and uh, family and, and children and all of these things. Uh, but he's a skeleton wearing conquistador armor. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's been in the dark for a hundred years. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> sad. That's how I see it. I don't know. Uh, I guess maybe be better as a horror movie, but that's just not how I roll. No. <laughs> don't no. want to go the easy route. <laughs> Corpses. No. I mean, they've been very. Uh, I'm a little older hard. now. Yeah, I want to write old. human stories, not exploitation <laughs> schlock. <laughs> right. The scary corpse has been done. This is the corpse who who loves and lives and hopes and dreams. Yeah. So when I yeah. get hired by the studio, they're going to say, "Come on, it's a 
skeleton in a con- it's a skeleton in a conquistador <laughs> armor movie. What do I got to do? Write read, read you a roadmap? <laughs> you know the drill, and uh, I'll deliver that. I'll deliver my uh, my there screenplay about 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 life itself. Beautiful. Yeah, I look forward to seeing that. Yeah, it might be better than Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We'll have to well, see. Well, what? Well, Speaking yeah. of uh, be conquistadors and what could be better than uh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh. <laughs> uh, coming in over the wire. This is in from Professor Christy Porter. Uh, mm. When was the last time you sat down at the piano and pounded the lower keys with your fists? <laughs> 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 I think she's referring to the music in this yeah. scene. Yeah. So. Oh, I had no idea she was. Yeah. I thought she was just, yeah. you know, pondering stuff. Yeah. <laughs> When's the that last time we too. took a nap on the floor of a bank? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, man, that, that, that is fun. That yeah. sucks. I remember as a kid, like, waiting for your grandparents in the bank or something, and you lie down on that, like, yeah. linoleum tile floor. It's and you like, could because you were a kid. You can't do yeah. that anymore. Oh, God, but it was pretty yeah. gross at the, when you think back on it. Yeah. But I mean, you get over that, and you're sort of like, "Oh, I'm, 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 I'm super <laughs> when you're a kid, we'd have to, you're we'd like, have to make, oh, go on." I, I was gonna say, you know, you're you're small, and you're real close to the ground, so I feel like on the bank floor, you get entranced by the diamonds that are on there. You yeah, know, the little tile diamonds or the little, the 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 sort of filigree. Oh, I was gonna use the word filigree, Jerry. That was <laughs> good. Oh, see, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got to give me a jinx. Give me a jinx. Uh, all right. All right. All right. It's all good. Didn't mean to leave you hanging. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> two, two stops we had to make when I was a kid. One was the bank. And the bank was so, so just absolutely stultifying. It oh, was yeah. suffocating. It mm-hmm. was so mm-hmm. dull in there. There was nothing to do except there were free little slips of paper. And, oh, sure. <laughs> and and they were sometimes the pin different the colors. Chain. One would be pink and one would be, you know, green or whatever yeah. and so i would always go and i would i would make sure i got a collection of each of the little slips of paper and to me they were important like espionage documents they were, <laughs> they were part of you know yeah. that was that was the only point of interest in the bank was was the free little slips of paper um and then there was the other stop we would always go to was the beauty parlor and had to had to sit in the beauty parlor oh god and it was you know this is how old i am and you know when my mother in in the early 1970s would go to a place which was called a beauty parlor right right. Um, (laughs) and it was old school man it was you know a lot of a lot of fake gold leaf and uh (laughs) and uh and at least that place had and uh, one thing interesting to me which was naked lady statues oh uh, nice a lot of little you know these very tacky sort of plaster of paris uh uh, naked ladies they were right here (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah statue yeah <laughs> um it's a lot harder to pretend to be a spy though in the beauty parlor i would think yeah, there, there are fewer documents there are, you know it's, it's not uh mm-hmm. doesn't see, yeah it doesn't ignite the well i was gonna say it doesn't ignite the no it, it, it was very easy to be statues it was very easy to be a spy what, what are the what are the two things we know about spies that they're that their interests are in uh, is, oh. is the secret documents and naked ladies that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I stand corrected. That was, trust me, if I was if I was having a full day of being a mini James Bond, those two mm-hmm. stops full, filled the bill. There was, there was <laughs> that, that's it. You know. I feel bad that we haven't attempted to answer uh, Professor Christy Porter's question about. Oh, when was the last boat. time? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's been tough. a long time, and I miss it. It's, that, that was yeah. a fun thing to do. Well, you sit down at the piano, and you're like, "Oh, I can play this." People sit down; they do all sorts of stuff. And then you start really playing it, and you're like, this sucks. How come the magic <laughs> not coming out? Yeah. And then you go yeah. down to the lower end, and you start, you know, gunk, pounding gunk, on gunk, the... Gunk. Yeah. 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 You play the theme to Halloween for a couple minutes, and then you move on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get on with your day. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's that feeling you go, and you you hit the highest, toppest key. Yeah. Like key 88. And you hit it, and it sounds like a smidge sour almost. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wait, is that yeah. actually a note? Or is it just like a sound? Is it like such a high sound that it's just they, they gave up after that? They're like, well, I, it's getting weird. Let's stop making let's stop making notes over here. <laughs> I got. I was just I, you know, I never uh, played a piano. No, 
No, they never gave no. me lessons. Nobody ever, nobody, nobody ever considered that I could do that. Oh, I never played either. I just, I just yeah. sometimes yeah. I would see one and I would press the buttons on it and make yeah. sounds. Oh yeah, I never even did that. I had a cool ca- Jerry. You'll remember this. I had that little Casio mini keyboard thing. Loved, it. and it was, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was like you know, it had like some pre record pre, you know, programmed songs in it, but then it also had like these different just like beats and stuff. Yeah, you know, a little like sampling thing. Or or Sambo. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know the one beat. Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> and you can do it at different tempos and different pitches and stuff. And, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Get me, I'm a musician. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. It's gonna be it's my horrible. The whole song. It's so horrible, Jim. Yeah, <laughs> we had we had a mall a mall organ in my house. Whoa! Oh, what do you wait? What? Like a mall purchased organ? Oh wow! Oh, oh not wow. one of those like cool. cheap, crappy uh, you know yeah. cardboard uh, organs that there would always be an organ store in the mall. Yeah, and. My parents got suckered into buying one. It uh-huh. uh, was in our house, and I know I never, I never once played it. Really? I never, did they, did I never they play even consider. No, they never touched it. It, it was never wow. touched. It was there, I think, just for show. It was one of the many things in it's the like house my, that you weren't allowed like to my touch. Organ. Um. Yeah, the, <laughs> weren't allowed to touch. <laughs> Don't touch your organ. They never used to touched. say to me, and I never did. Peter, <laughs> you touching your organ? <laughs> You playing the merengue? <laughs> I knew this was going to go there. Why that wasn't I, a note. Why didn't that I was say? Way too high. <sighs> why did I use the word organ? Um, oh, I never. T- it was the thing in my house, chopsticks. which was. You, there was a lot of things in the house that you think would be utile, but were in fact not. You mm-hmm. know, there were they were like yeah. the good the good uh, towels that you weren't supposed to use yeah. in the bathroom. Yeah. You know? Okay, yeah. wait. I got yeah. one, Tommy, right now, and and I invoked your aunt Marilyn's uh, name. Okay. Uh, and character and uh, design <laughs> <laughs> interior decorating yesterday. Okay. You were going to the downstairs bathroom at your Aunt Marilyn's house. And mm-hmm. if you went to wash your hands, oh, God. she had a little cup mm-hmm. or sort of like a, I don't know, it was like a round bowl. An and inside would be, dish. yeah, with a soap dish with the floral, <laughs> like the so- little ball soaps that were, yeah. they look like flower. I guess flowers. flower buds or something. They yeah. were flower buds, and you'd be oh, like, yeah, "Oh, there's a lavender those. one, and there's like a there's like a periwinkle and a cornflower, <laughs> and they're yeah. all sort of these these pastel shades of bluish purple." Yeah. And you pick it up, and you're like, "Am I not supposed to be doing this?" Yeah, well, because you use it, and you're like, "You have no choice. It's the only soap, and you would use it." And you'd be like, "Oh, it's so small. Do I use two of them? Like, because I'm not getting any lather." And like after a while, you'd be like, "It would. They would never wear down." They would mm-hmm. always just be little, like, <clears throat> with the carved, like, petals and stuff. And then after a while, the, the they would get gross. Like, like, yeah. like, like, gunk, like, the people's hand gunk would get, would end up in, like, the folds you wonder, of the petals. I wonder why you're like, washing it all. Of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I should stop using this bathroom. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I'm so I, always, I, always, I always hated stuff like that. I always hated stuff that was, like, you weren't supposed to touch or it wasn't supposed to be mm-hmm. used. It was just, it was a thing that was meant to be useful but this this was like a special version of it that wasn't useful yeah and my yeah. and my house was was run by by crazy people uh you know okay. truly truly insane individuals <laughs> the data because, Ro- data relinis yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> never could uh, they were Rolini. uh so we had the you know we had the good towels that you weren't ever supposed to use in the bathroom yeah but they were kept on a on a towel rack that was inside the shower <laughs> but you weren't supposed to they were you weren't supposed to get them wet ever oh my god it was a minute. terrible place to keep them really That's i think stupid. it was a yeah. poor poor decision <laughs> wow to keep them there but then you know growing up as i did in in an in t- Italian American home in the Bronx in the early seventies. That's what you did. I mean, that's you can just picture the decor. You did you have the uh, the and, plastic and it's worse uh, than you on imagine. the couch and stuff? We had that. We had that. You did? We had we, we had, had the, yeah, oh, we, we had, had the that. plastic covering on yeah. the couch. Oh, My mother sure. bought a couch uh that was white. Mm-hmm. Which is one of the dumbest things yeah. to do if you're you, go, you know if you're a porter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and we did. We had the plastic couch on it. We had to, it was a big deal when you took the, the couch has a off. date with a cherry pie. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you ever remember those homes you'd go over? It might be an aunt's like your uh, like a friend's aunt's or yeah, you know, maybe your aunt's, but the slightly different aunt, and you're like, 
I'm not sure if I should go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. think that's off limits. What could there be up there mm. for me? I think, and like I you, think there's like you, a living room down here, and that makes sense yeah. to me. I'll just yeah, I know. I, this is like the greeting room where I'm dropped off, yeah. and you kind of stare at the base of the stairs <laughs> looking up. <laughs> you know, like a, like a 45-degree angle all the way up the stairs, like yeah. Mount Everest. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> And so, do, I mean, do you did you ever venture? Up? Yes. Yeah. What it, was, it was it was like you get up there and 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 it's quiet, and you you know you look and there's like new curves and new angles, and you're like, oh, it's a double hallway, <laughs> you know that type of stuff. And then you're you're like, I hope nobody sees me. Here. Hello, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you make it all the way back down to the stairs, you're like, oh, I got to be really quiet on my way up. <laughs> on the way down. They're going to know. <laughs> what always, we had the plastic slip covers, but what always baffled me was you'd think, well, you, you, you the purpose of the plastic slip covers is now you can just go nuts on the yeah. couch. Now you can just yeah. shove you can, a pie. Yeah, you can just be fine. eat. You can just eat spaghetti out of your hand mm -hmm. and just, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But no, because the in my house, the plastic slip covers were sacred. They were precious. They were oh my God. treated as if they wow. were the couch. So you, gotten you weren't couch allowed to eat covers for the plastic covers on, on the couch. Right, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. more like steel covering the plastic covering the couch. No, my grandparents something. had that. They had the plastic cover. And then on top of that, there was like a cloth throw. Oh, my thing God. Over it. Yeah, right. Wow. But and, it, they, and, it, and all, all of that was treated as sacrosanct. My like parents were shot for very sane. You right. spill something on the plastic, but the whole point of the plastic is you can, <laughs> yeah. you can, you can throw a vat of beans on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could, Tommy, you had a, a classic living room that ironically yeah. was a misnomer there's no right. living that takes place in that room there was the family oh, yeah. room where everyone hung out there was oh, a tv totally there was a to section yeah. and then there was yeah there was a living room where you would go in there if company came whatever that meant and yeah. or on like christmas like you know but christmas the, but the living maybe, room yeah. was just, it was it was almost like a throwback to like a some uh, i don't know like renaissance <laughs> palace yeah. type you like like this is yeah. a showroom right there's oh, it's all Versailles. these Look at this. Yeah, yeah they've got huddles. This and... is great. My, I, I go to my parents' house now for like, you know, whatever, uh, visit in the summer or Christmas or whatever. And sometimes my son will go and sit in the living room. I'll find him and they're like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> what are you doing in here? <laughs> it's the living room. <laughs> sit on that. Yeah. I'm sure at some point I must have, I, I totally relate. I'm sure at some point I must have said to my mother, this is the living room. What? Let us, let me live. <laughs> right. Why do let you call me it live. That? Why won't you let me live? <laughs> Wait a base of this. We need a place to put the china, the <laughs> exactly, good china yeah. that no one can touch, and we never eat off of. And, and I, after all of that, my parents like, every time I go to I go home, they're always like, "Oh, you know, you you and your sister got to figure out like what you're gonna take, you know, when we get rid of this house and stuff." And I'm like, "Mom, nothing, nothing. I don't have room for any of this. I don't want any of this. This doesn't fit with our stuff. I'm not. I don't need that grandfather clock. I don't need that break front." I don't need any of this a break stuff. front. Oh God, yeah. we had a break oh, yeah. front. We had a break, we had a break front. front full of chocolate. And we, and we broke it. Yeah. Wow, I, I broke it. I broke the break front. <laughs> I find that very hard oh. to believe. <laughs> well, the makers shouldn't be too surprised because yeah, they really. called it a break front. Which part did I've you break? I've never heard of a break front before. I don't even know. I, 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 it's it's a cat. It's like a it's like a pretty. I'm cabinet looking it up or something. Like, yeah, like, it's a thing that holds glass front to the, that, yeah, it's it the thing that. that holds the good china you yeah. inherited it's from ornate. your your yeah. gr you know your yeah. great aunt or your grandmother, and all of a sudden it shows up and you're like, oh, this is a plate, but I've never eaten toast off of yeah. this plate. I don't think but I it's should. Still, yeah, it's still. That's in why the house. it's still a plate, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if and you knew if you ever opened it and touched anything that was in it, you were dead. Yeah. yeah. It was basically out. the 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 place that like a big Russian guy gets thrown into in a, <laughs> in a movie. You yeah. know, he gets thrown against the break front and the glass flies everywhere. He's like the bad guy, he's the Nazi or whatever, and all the yeah. plates fall down and <sighs> Yeah, and if you reach into the break, if you ever like got the key and opened the break front, like touched anything in there, you knew immediately that all of your ancestors before you knew what you just did, <laughs> and they're scowling at you from from the netherworld. Yeah, it's amazing. Our break you. front had a key. 
Yeah, it did. It had a key, it was like under an lock and key. Yeah, you yeah. lock yeah. the brake front so the burglars can't steal the good china that's on the <laughs> <Right>. display. <laughs> like, oh yeah. damn it! If I only had the key. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's very important. They broke for into me. the house, but they can't break yeah. into the brake front. <laughs> it's and it's and speaking of the the thought of of theft is the it's very important for me to 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 explain that. Uh, we were not rich, so all of this stuff that was precious and protected in my house was cheap crap. Uh -huh. But it was your cheap crap. It was it yeah. was absolutely worthless. <laughs> <laughs> cheap, tacky garbage from like a mafia furniture furniture store. <laughs> we had wow. a painting that was it was a it was a large painting to go over the over the couch, and uh, it was about six feet wide by three feet high it was huge and it was it had like the fake gold leaf on it and it was like a one of these vague non-specific mediterranean scenes with just water and fountains and leaves and columns and some imaginary environment of ancient rome or something oh, and, God. and, <laughs> with, and, and Littered throughout the this giant painting thing were little insets of colored glass, and coming wow. from the painting was a wire, and you'd plug the painting in, and oh, the God. little the little glass things would light up. Oh, that's fantastic! Wow. Yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah, that's art. That's yeah. what that is. Yeah, that's 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 where I come from. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. That explains everything. It's yeah. it's it's art, but not in the not in the, not in the right way. It's it's art in the wrong way. It's wow. so gloriously tacky that it takes on some kind of transcendence, doesn't it? Wow. Uh, looking back on it, I almost inherited that, and I should have I should have just kept it. I should have oh yeah it in storage for the rest of my life. That would so literally that would be worth it. something to somebody. Somebody would. Can, would can I say something that. about art in the right way, though? Oh yeah. I have sitting here right beside me an incredible book of art called Inked by <laughs> yeah. Mr. Joe Dater. Oh, Say, yeah, that's, uh, I cannot wow. recommend this highly enough. Well, if, thank you very much. Love. It's a, available wherever books are available and uh, all of your your famous uh, big websites. And uh, But, uh, yeah. you know, you can get it off your, your ind independent websites as well. Uh, inked uh, Cartoons, Confessions, uh, Rejected uh, Ideas and Secret Sketches uh, from The New Yorker's Joe Dater. That's me. That's I'm waiting me. for the audio book of the cartoon book. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the right actor to read it. All right. That's the, that's the thing. I'm trying to like a guy he's sitting on a bench and he's, uh, right he's looking voice. at a thing and uh, the, the caption says, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to see who, who we can get to read it. But uh, you know, That'll like be awesome. Samuel L. Jackson or somebody. Like that. Really, sure. Really, you know, really forceful like that. Somebody who yeah. intimidating who's going to mm -hmm. yell every single word of it. Right. I'd be scared uh, not to laugh. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a it's a thank you for the plug. It's a book of my cartoons. Some of them were in were in the New Yorker. Some of them couldn't get in the New Yorker, but should be and and should have been in the New Yorker. And some mm. of them I never had any realistic expectation were going to be published anywhere. And those are probably my favorite ones. Oh, the and, old books. Yeah. And, and I love that you kind of get to see behind the scenes of how you, yeah, there's you a, make some of them. You kind of get lot to see Joe's sausage scenes. if you get this book. Oh, good. Good to know. <laughs> well, we talked about my organ and now yeah. you get to see. You've got an organ, you've got a sausage. <laughs> you'll get to see, you'll get to see the, uh, how, how, how the sausage um, got made. Joe, you're the whole package. <laughs> the package, the sausage, it's all there. We, um, Yeah. Well, um, I feel very, I feel very self conscious, and and I feel, I feel sexualized now, and I'm not. <laughs> that was not our intention. Not, we apologize. I'm not used to that. To Most people safe. do the opposite. I, I, they, that was our. They intention. want to desexualize. Oh, it was. It was Pete's intention. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, we, we, Pete doesn't speak for for well, all. Thank of us. you. I think it's a, I think it's a fair, it's a fairly funny book, and uh, it's thank a very you very funny. Much. It is. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, it's, it's a very uh, funny book. And it's, uh, it's pretty cheap right now if you get it on Amazon. Oh, thank you for the plug for the book. Uh, it's yeah, that was all Pete. I'm. I'm proud of it. Uh, yeah, I've all, I, the other thing I'm proud of is I'm also the co-host of the Comedy Film Funnel, which is a yeah. which is a <laughs> video cast currently a video cast on YouTube, and uh, we're also putting it up as a podcast as well. That's uh, the show I do with Susan Kruglinska, where we uh, we do a deep dive into comedy films. Uh, we started out with the original 1967 Bedazzled. 
oh, wow. Peter Cook and Dudley Moore, and uh, you can find that on YouTube. And and we've since we've uh, gone and done deep dives into the movies The In Laws. Uh, and uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, nice. And uh, the Marx Brothers Animal Crackers, which was, I know people always say Duck Soup is their uh, masterpiece. Animal Crackers, that's mine. That's my favorite. <laughs> Absolutely, Animal Crackers. Uh, and uh, and we just put up a, a special supplemental one about a very obscure movie called The, uh, the Return of Captain Invincible, which is oh, wow. a... It's a it's a superhero comedy musical starring <laughs> Alan Arkin and Christopher Lee. Oh my uh, God! Huh. It's a very obscure and very strange film. Wow! Uh, in which both of those uh, those guys sing. <laughs> oh man! Uh, wow! Yeah, and so this has been that. our little yeah. And Susan and I are the co-hosts of this, and it's it's mostly her thing, but it's been this little labor of love that we've been doing. Oh, beautiful! And and it's it's really really fun, and it's called the Comedy Film Funnel. And it's called a funnel because you put things into a funnel, um, although they come out the bottom, which is not ideal. Oh, yeah. We're still working on that part of it. We, we really don't know why it's a funnel. Um, <laughs> the funnel yeah, but, is your knowledge reaching the people who are watching or listening. That, 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 right. That so imagine you imagine them. that we have – their comedy exists and then you exist mm-hmm. and we are the funnel – that is stuck into your brain <laughs> and comedy. We are cramming Thank God. He said comedy. Brain. We are allowing <laughs> comedy to be forced into you. <laughs> and it it like, like fat in a duck. Delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's and fantastic. That's, and that's what it is. And I think that's who wouldn't love that. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> so I'm going yeah. to find that. So that's comedy film funnel. Putting the funnel in comedy. <laughs> no, the com- putting the comedy into the, the funnel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I said, the, the title, eh, we're still working on that. But the, <laughs> but the comedy and the fun and the knell, it's all there. Beautiful. <laughs> well, everybody, <laughs> go again. do that. Um, and please uh, come back and visit us next week for minute uh, 102 of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull right here on the Indiana Jones Minute. Well, goodbye then. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, goodbye, Joe, and thank you for coming. That was beautiful. <laughs> thank you. had a you. great time. That was, that was really fun. Uh, um, I just want to point out that um this is this has been fun this has been fun yeah, yeah i feel now fun. like i shoved you out the door at the end and i didn't mean to i, I was I, I i'm not good at segues oh no that's a that's okay i'm uh i'm uh, very much good at segues um, okay speaking of uh <laughs> that <laughs> see smooth as smooth as silk <laughs> <laughs>